here in the White House. Sunland Safadi, thanks very much. All right, so joining us now is Democratic Congressman Jerry Connolly of Virginia. He serves on the House Oversight and Foreign Affairs Committee. Good morning, uh, Congressman. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And I, as I understand it, you are preliminary at this point, yes, on this, yes. On this uh, vote to avert a government shutdown. But earlier this week, you said, I would put money on this one. So this morning, what's your over-under on if the White House backs this, if um, the president signs it? You know, despite some uh, <laughs> blustering, um, I think the White House uh, has no choice but to sign this bill or face, uh, frankly, a revolt in the Republican hmm. ranks here in Congress. Huh, uh, there's no, appet no, no appetite in the Congress. Well, okay. uh, on, on the funding of the government, um, I don't think Republicans want another shutdown. It was disastrous for them and their brand, and it really hurt this president. Uh, they don't want to repeat that. Let me ask you about what um, Democrats got and what you didn't get, because DACA is not included in this deal at all. That's and right. last year, as you well know, Democrats offered $25 billion for a border barrier in exchange for, for permanent uh, protection for, for the DACA population. Do you think at all, Congressman, that Democrats missed an opportunity to get something done on DACA here? No, because I don't. I think I think that simply would have been a deal breaker with the Republicans mm. and with the White House. Uh, sadly, uh, the president actually created this problem by rescinding the executive order that protected Dreamers. Uh, and while he professed to be sympathetic to their plight, he has done nothing to be helpful. And every deal we presented to him, he's rejected. I would just note that, as you know, someone counter that statement and say, look, the Obama administration chose to use an executive order, which can be reversed by the next president instead of doing this through Congress. Of course, there have been attempts many times on, on comprehensive immigration reform. Well, I, I, would, I, would, I, I, would, yes? I would say in response, Poppy, to that, Obama faced a Republican Congress that wouldn't pass that legislation. He had no choice if he was going to protect dreamers but to resort to an executive order. And, of course, I find it ironic that Republicans would criticize that, given the multiplicity of executive orders this president, this Republican president, has been using to govern. Both presidents have used them a lot. Let's move on to this. You have been vocal in your support for uh, Minnesota Congressman, the freshman Representative Ilhan Omar, uh, after the fallout over her anti-Semitic tweets. I know you don't agree with her statements. But here's what you said in her defense. She's a freshman. She's new here. She's young. I think she has learned a painful lesson. But her first anti-Semitic trope dates back seven years, Congressman, to 2012, when she said that Israel had hypnotized the world, and she talked about the evil doings of Israel. Uh, Is are you asking me a question? I, I am. I guess you're saying she's young. You know, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what new, it is you want. She's I a don't member know what, of Congress. What, so my what is question it you is, want me I'd like to understand she's a member of Congress and this isn't this isn't a new statement. This is a series of statements that is deeply offensive to many Jewish Americans, many Americans, and I'm wondering if you're concerned about how far back it goes. I am. I, I am concerned that anyone with a history of anti Semitism uh, frankly, needs to confront their own words and understand their impact. And obviously, we also need to understand the mindset behind it. But uh, I, I stand by what I said. She is okay. young. She is new. Uh, and she is now a member of Congress. She was, you know, uh, a young citizen before that. Uh, that doesn't excuse those words, but it puts it in somewhat of a context. I will say this, Poppy. Sure. Uh, I don't understand why this is still a three or four day story, but uh, given all the all the other things we're dealing with, but really, I mean, she at, sits, well, well, since you, I, since you, let, I, let me explain I would, I would, why. If I because no, if I could finish the... my statement, sure. if I could finish my statement, sure. Um, so it's a four day story because of fascination with this, but the, but she's apologized. She was condemned by Democratic leadership. Mm -hmm. Her words. Uh, and she apologized, uh, apologized unequivocally. Um, meanwhile, we have the contrast on the Republican side of a president. Uh, where does one even begin to talk about hateful speech with him? Um, he's got mega rallies that in many cases are overtly anti-Semitic. We have remarks that were anti-Semitic code by the 
Republican leader here in the House. Mm -hmm. We have a 17 year history of Steve King and racist remarks, and there was absolute silence on the Republican side of the aisle so, until recently. So, if so Steve King why the Congress, double standard? Why the look, double standard between I, a young I, Muslim woman and all of this other history? I hear you. Uh, you should watch Jake Tapper's show. Uh, from last night when he laid it all out there and we're talking about that but because she is on the foreign affairs committee with you and she's a fellow democrat i have a few questions for you on that given sure. the inexperience that you cite as part of the reason you think that she not only wrote this in 2012 but also wrote it's all about the benjamins talking about why republicans uh, have apac support um just you know a week ago do you think she should remain on the house foreign affairs committee well i <laughs> She just got there. Uh, she hasn't had much opportunity yet to sort of learn the ropes. Uh, I think there's an opportunity for her uh, to learn a lot and to, uh, to start to maybe temper the views she came to Congress and, and this committee with. Um, I don't know that uh, this one outburst uh, and that history you cite uh, mm -hmm. is enough to disqualify her from being on the so, Foreign Affairs Committee. But it's certainly something to be watched and hopefully okay. she can be mentored. So let me ask you about that because it was less than a month ago when she was on the show with, with us when we asked her about those comments. And she said, quote, I don't know how my comments would be offensive to Jewish Americans. That was on January 17th when she was a member of Congress already. Does that concern you? Yeah, it concerns me, but I think she's certainly learned her lesson since. She now does understand how those comments are not only offensive to Jewish Americans, but to all Americans. Um, I'm not Jewish, but I will tell you, those remarks are very offensive to me, too. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand that. And, and finally, because you represent the state of Virginia, embattled Virginia Governor Ralph Northam was young and not in politics uh, when it's alleged that he took that photo uh, it, it, of someone in blackface when he was, it's alleged she was in the photo of someone in blackface and, and in a KKK hat. Um, he apologized. You told Anderson Cooper earlier this month that despite that apology, his ability to govern is non-existent. Is it a double standard then for him? You no, say he can't so. govern because of actions when he was young and not in politics versus you saying let's give Representative Omar a chance here? I think that's really a false equivalency, Poppy. He's the chief executive of the Commonwealth of Virginia. The question in, for him is can you govern after this kind of uh, really maladroit management of a, a, a terrible incident, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, who will campaign with you? Who will want to be seen with you? He's already had multiple uh, public invitations rescinded by public universities and other institutions around the Commonwealth as the governor because they don't want him there. And so I think he's, his moral authority has collapsed. But I think they're very different cases and should be treated as such. I hear your point. Can he govern versus should, he, should she be given a chance? We appreciate your time on these issues.